Welcome everyone, I'm Walt Schoenborn, Director of Digital Media at ScienceBoard.net, and I'm extremely pleased to be here with Dr. Jacques Gallipo. He is President-Elect of ISCT 2020-2022. Uh, Congratulations, Dr. Gallipo. Thank you, Walt. Uh, Dr. Gallipo is also Associate Dean for Therapeutics Development at University of Wisconsin uh, at Madison. Um, so again, uh, I very much appreciate you being here. I know uh, how extremely busy you are, so thank you for your time, uh, and thank you for being on scienceboard.net. Um, ISCT 2022 is an in-person event, and it's the first time that you guys have had an in-person event since, I think, Melbourne in 2019. And uh, you know, previous to that, those were you know being held virtually for I think 2020 and 2021 as well. Um, how does it feel to be having this meeting in person finally? You know what? I just feel bad for those guys that are persistent doing virtual meetings from this <laughs> time on. How can you describe it? You know. It's true for everything and anything uh, moving forward. Uh, just the eye contact, right. the nonverbal, the the, uh, the, sera the serendipitous walking into somebody, and you, it, with a two D, a two D screen that just doesn't happen. So yeah. the um, it, that would be true for any in person meeting for any field of endeavor. It's so refreshing, and you. And you know what? You, it's 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 like walking through the desert, and somebody hands you a glass of cool water, yeah. and everybody's like that. It's um, and it's so funny because you do Zoom, and even though their camera's on, you know their eyes are on looking at their emails. You know they're not looking at you, but you're in person. Yeah, like people don't have laptops on. They're not even goofing around on their phones. They're looking at you, they're engaged. No, I agree 100%. And with an appetite uh, that you know, far exceeds uh, what we're used to seeing. Before. So it's terrific. Yeah, no, it's, and, and you know, the thing is, is that both from the exhibit hall and from the sessions, uh, I was telling Bambi earlier, like I, it was just, um, it's, you can see it on people, like you said, you can see it on everyone's face. They are just very happy to be here. They're, they're very, um, you know, the, the, the nature of this meeting is collaborative in any case, virtually or not, and to actually be able to engage, you know, face to face. I mean, I was, I was downstairs and uh, saw people that just really hadn't seen one another, yet they work with one another, hadn't seen one another, like shook hands in person. It was pretty incredible to see. Um, it's also, in addition to your uh, presidency of ISCT, um, and uh, it's also the 30th anniversary of ISCT, which I wasn't aware of until, uh, until this meeting. Um, I guess the question I have for you is, what, what would you consider the status of the field, and what does a milestone mean for the organization and the adva advancement of cell and gene therapy as a whole? Yeah, so the, uh, um, when this all started uh, 30 years uh, yonder, it was predicated on a lot of bone marrow transplant technology, which is a practice of medicine, which had been around since the late 60s, really launched the 90s. And what has really changed now is the advent of uh, genetically armored or engineered cells, yeah. which really converts cells to pharmaceuticals right. in a way that goes far beyond simple transplantation of yeah. cells and tissue. And from the blue sky perspective, that's the tectonic shift. And that's exemplified by all the approvals, for example, of the CAR-T products, for example, yeah. which are all gene engineered. Not, not belittling other cell therapies that aren't gene engineered, but that's sort of been the abrupt shift right. in interest, especially from the large pharma entities that are now looking down at this as viable commercial products. Yeah. And the thing about uh, uh, gene enhancement is, you know, Mother Nature's rule book you can throw in the dustbin. Yeah. Because by reprogramming cells to do something that they naturally aren't designed to do, Correct. or amplifying it, uh, you can introduce elements that lead to a pharmaceutical effect, meaning that they can overcome sort of the normal natural checks and balances on their function. Yes. And now the the, uh, the world is your oyster. So 
I'll give you an example. One of the the car T space and, and K space, one of the insights they're having now is for this to really work, say, for solid tumors, you need to add some extra ingredients to the sauce. So like adding cytokines or other molecules that amplify even more, especially for solid tumors, which is the next big thing. And uh, cytokines, I'll give you an example. There's, I don't know, cytokines, interleukins. They're, they're, they're protein hormones yes. that jazz up the immune system. There's maybe 100 of them. Right. So pick and choose which are the ones you can put in. So the I'm not suggesting one is better than the other. But what I'm saying is there is a logarithmic effect right. on how these this technological platform can evolve. And ISCT... Uh, at its uh, core, is about platform development. Yeah. From the disruptive science, MacGyvering it in a way you can come up with a <laughs> a, pr a practicable product that yeah. you can introduce as an investigational drug in human subjects, uh -huh. and then moving it along the regulatory path for marketing approval. Marketing approval is important for pharma, but it's also important for uh, products that you wish to deploy within the healthcare system that can complement the commercial products. Absolutely. So, um, uh, yes, the win is in itself because of disruptive technology. Yes. Uh, especially since that disruptive technology has had literally a Lazarus effect for certain conditions. Right. Now, there's a whole spectrum of effect from, you know, uh, improving quality of life to pulling out of your know, deathbed. Yes. But uh, that's the normal spectrum of things for a cell pharmaceutical. So yes, very exciting time. And you're, the distinguishing feature of the ISCT is uh, we uh, bring to the fore individual folks that are interested in platforms, but the folks are involved in all the steps of development and deployment. Yeah. I mean, they're groups that are solely focused on discovery. I'm a university scholar. I do a lot of discovery stuff. Right. And there are folks at the other end. They're interested in post-marketing commercialization issues. Right. But there's a lot in the middle, and which has to do with taking in a, a concept, reducing it to practice that allows for investigational clinical trials under license, and doing what needs to be done to, for the winners to emerge at the other end as something that's deployable for the general population. Yeah, and, and it covers, as you touched on, it covers a wide gamut of so many things. It's, you know, especially this meeting is you have people that are from the manufacturer standpoint or the deployment standpoint or just the data collection standpoint. We're going to, we're, we, you know, that's, that's a, a huge counterpoint that's there and it's, you know, something we could talk about for hours. But I want to, I want to touch on something. Um, regarding the the ISCT 2022 as universal, because the theme here is bench to bedside to benefit, and we talk about uh, you know a, a wider array of cell and gene therapies and making them available. Um, how how does that happen to be available to address more diseases in larger populations? Yeah. So the uh, again, those three words: bench, bedside, and the benefit. They sort of capture that spectrum I spoke of. And you know what, now uh, we're victims of our success because before it was all sort of stuff you cured mice, yeah. and then it was experimental therapies, will they work, will they approve, not be approved. Now we've, we've passed that Rubicon. So then it becomes benefit, how do you deploy it? And, uh, and one of the big aspects of the ICT we didn't touch upon also is we have a, uh, a large ethics sort of quality of life, uh, distributive justice perspective. Yeah. And uh, again, I'm a hospital-based physician, I'm a practicing right. physician as well. So I see patients. And so I bring to the presidency that perspective that complements the perspective of many of my predecessors and uh, many of my successors in the future. And there, the at the end of the day, we think, well, the patient is the beneficiary, but the conduit to the patient is the physician that makes the recommendation. Correct. And we're always concerned about uh, access. Like, uh, 
and that boils down to, and that varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Yeah. And that's another big thing about the ISCT that informs our commercial partners. Uh, th that that road, all the friction points and the headwinds are going to be distinct in the European Union. Yes. Where it's predominantly public health care systems. Correct. Where the value proposition is different in yeah. regards to pricing and reimbursement. Or the U.S., which is a completely, completely different, different system. Animal. And, uh, you know... 60% uh, of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and 40% of Americans wouldn't be able to take on a $400 emergency expense. Yeah. So if you're thinking of deployment, and somebody has to cover 20% of the cost of their drugs because they're on Medicare, but they couldn't really afford a Part D supplement, or they have they live two hours away from the hospital, but they have to move to a hotel to a, a company, a sick uh, parent that's yes. hospitalized. How do you make that connect with the, the, the price points and is something that we care about deeply. And uh, there are different models. There's a traditional pharma model, hey, two thumbs up for that. Right, right. Tried right. and true. And we can reflect upon also uh, uh, some of these platforms could be deployed as uh, services within hospitals. They do that a lot in Europe. Yeah. They call it hospital exemption. Exactly. It's controversial, but, but they do that. And uh, I say it's controversial. There's nothing unethical about it. It's all like squared away, but uh, it's that... A different model. It's a different model where hospitals can make their own home brew. Yeah. And it's still compliant with GMP. But... The, that's not a solution, and it should not be one or the other. We need to think creatively of something that's sustainable because we've all seen examples of uh, entities winning the battle of marketing approval but losing the war of uh, deployment. Yeah. And he, we need to avoid that. And there have been a couple of these events that occurred in the cell therapy space yes. remotely. And we need to learn from that and think creatively about where it's a win-win for everybody. But the access is getting better, right? I mean, it's the it's from 30 years. It's still cell and gene therapy is still it's such a new modality. You know, you start going into like precision medicine and all these other kind of things where it's you you kind of make your own home group. The accessibility is is it's getting better. Well, it's going to be the next big issue. Yeah. I, I think. Because the low-hanging fruit in the short term, because of, uh, I'm talking about the U.S. now, yes. the uh, uh, legislative regulatory environment sort of favored going after orphan disorders because you could get accelerated approval mm -hmm. and there was a different sort of pricing reimbursement strategy to that. But that's not deployable for breast cancer. It's not deployable for prostate cancer. It's not deployable for arthritis, that model. So the we need to be, and it comes back to the cost of goods. Yes. And uh, how to, and it's, if it, if you have a technology that has a truly dramatic transformative impact on the outcome of an ailment, uh, a way will be found. Yeah. It's all those that, you know what, they're really interesting. There's benefit. It's not curing you. Right. How do you position those? There's going to be that hole, and you don't want to toss those away either. Of course. So that's going to be the the the, the next. How to navigate that? How to how to navigate that approach from the the marketing aspects and 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 being able to do the accessibility to the the end patient and it, it's still it, it's fascinating. I could honestly I could talk to you for hours on this. Um, Mr. President, I really, uh, Mr. President-elect, I very much appreciate your time. Dr. Jacques Gallipo, uh, president of ISCT. Um, Jacques, thank you so much for everything. Oh, I really uh, appreciate well, it. So a next meeting, 2023 in Paris, you guys be there. Uh, and, and I will, I will have uh, my much better French accent for, for uh, Dr. Jacques, Jacques Gallipo. Oh, there you go. You're all set. We oui, oui. <laughs> Take care.